seems to me that this political issue could be something that the Democrats could get some traction on. Here we are Tuesday morning and I've avoided this topic as long as I possibly can. Honestly, the entire thing is horrible and I hate doing a video about it at all. But I have to because the Democrat Party media has wasted no time in extracting maximum political gain from these tragedies. Isn't it amazing that after a Bernie Sanders supporter shoots up a GOP baseball game, nobody in the media tries to attach that to Democrat rhetoric or rhetoric from the media. Or when an Antifa member attacks an ICE facility, nobody in the media asks if Democrat rhetoric led to that attack, even though the guy's manifesto reads like a CNN transcript. If you do a quick search right now for news about that attack, you're going to be hard pressed finding any mainstream sources labeling the attacker as coming from Antifa. And for that matter, you're going to be hard pressed finding any Democrat condemnation of that attack. Or how about all those police assassinations under the Obama administration? Specifically, the coordinated attack that killed five police officers in Dallas during a Black Lives Matter rally. Obama, the Democrats, and the media were all big supporters of Black Lives Matter and of course received no backlash for their support of the group after those assassinations. Again, completely different reaction from the media during that event. Mick Mulvaney, White House Chief of Staff, actually confronted several of these so-called journalists on these obvious double standards and in both cases the journalists just deflected and didn't answer the question. Did anyone blame Bernie Sanders for the congressional baseball game shooting. No, I don't think so. Did anyone blame uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for the gentleman, gentleman, for the, the, the crazy guy who tried to blow up the DHS office in Washington state, taking, I think, a homemade bomb and, and an AR-15 to shoot up what he called a concentration camp, the exact same rhetoric that AOC was using. Did anybody blame her? This is more than, than better roar. We'll get right back to exposing our hypocritical DNC media, but first I'd like to give a quick shout out to DannyandParkNovels.com. If you like fictional crime stories, you should definitely head over there and check these novels out, especially because the author is an active homicide investigator. His stories are set in Richmond, Virginia, and no doubt reflect his experience as a homicide investigator. If you'd like me to give a shout out to your website or channel, simply make a purchase at ribtcom forward slash drone tech and use the promo code drone tech. You can also send me a donation on PayPal. Simply send me a proof of purchase and I'll give you a shout out. Thank you. Instead of coming together and trying to find a solution to this epidemic, the media and the Democrats have once again chosen to just further divide this country by holding their political opposition to blatant double standards. This will just continue to harden people's partisan political stances and ensure that there are two increasingly divided Americas. Several Democratic presidential candidates argue the president bears some responsibility for the shooting in El Paso. Stop. The president bears no responsibility for this attack. He has nothing to do with it. Interesting that they bring up this manifesto, but they weren't at all interested in talking about the Antifa manifesto that sounded a lot like what you might hear from AOC, Tlaib, Omar, or their supporters in the media. But this is what you have to expect from an organization that is essentially just an extension of the Democrat Party. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. Channeling all the Democrat presidential candidates to spread misinformation and assert their double standards. Bernie Sanders even calls for Trump to stop his quote, racist anti-immigrant rhetoric. What the hell is he even talking about? Sure, he's been a vocal critic of illegal immigration, but racist anti-immigrant rhetoric? No doubt Sanders is referring to the fake news spread by our media that Trump had called immigrants animals or an infestation when in fact he had been referring to MS-13. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there well, could well, be an MS-13 gang member I know about. If they don't reach a certain threshold, I cannot tell ICE about them. Yeah. We have people coming into the country or trying to come in. We're stopping a lot of them. But we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. Listening to Sanders' lecture about rhetoric is nauseating enough on its own, but it's even worse because Sanders himself has disavowed having any responsibility to violence carried out by his supporters. I say to President Trump, please, Stop the racist, anti-immigrant rhetoric. Some of your supporters in Chicago were acting violently as well. And I have to say, the guy who rushed the stage yesterday at Donald Trump voted for you. Now, I know you're not encouraging, I know you're not encouraging the violence, but Jake, you need to tell your supporters. Millions of people voted for me. If I have to take responsibility for everybody who voted for me, it will be a very difficult life. 
This is the privilege of being a Democrat in a country where the vast majority of media is dominated by Democrats. They're able to hold their political opposition to standards that they themselves will never be held to. Personally, I don't blame Sanders for any action taken by any of his supporters, just like I don't blame Trump. Nothing that Trump has said or done could have incited this attack. However, the media is certainly painting that picture by spreading misinformation that Trump called immigrants animals or an infestation. The president has employed to rhetoric that you might have heard during the Third Reich. Uh, calling human beings an infestation is something that we might have expected to hear in Nazi Germany. Another big lie that they're trotting out again is that Trump called white supremacists good people using a five second snippet of an hour long conference. Trump specifically condemned the white supremacists at Charlottesville. I, oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups and you had people and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But he also said that there were quote good people on both sides referring specifically to people who were there to protest the removal of historic monuments. He even made the argument that Washington and Jefferson would be next after which you can hear the press pool react with outrage and bewilderment that such a thing could ever happen. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're we going to take down his statue. That brings us to today, where Democrat media and the Democrat presidential candidates are using those earlier lies to bolster their claims now that Trump is to blame for the attacks. You see how that works? So we got Jake Tapper and these other Democrat activists in the media just teeing up one Democrat after another to perpetuate this lie and the lie that anything Trump has said up to this point has risen to the level of inspiring attacks. Do you agree with that? Do you think President Trump is a white nationalist? So Beto O'Rourke told me earlier this show that in his view, the president's anti-immigrant rhetoric is making things worse and creating an atmosphere of violence. He uses the language that we've heard from the president in terms of calling migrants coming into this country an invasion. It's in the second sentence of this manifesto or screed. Is saying something that's unfair? Do you see any sort of link between the comments the president makes and this kind of violence? What do you think? Well, I believe that President Trump is making it worse. Again, and I hate repeating myself, but when a Bernie supporter shot up a GOP baseball game and almost killed Steve Scalise, we saw none of this from the media. There were zero questions from CNN or MSNBC or ABC or NBC about who incited the attack because obviously that would cast Democrats and the media in a negative light. In fact, I recall a CNN segment with Allison Camerata where she berated a Republican congressman about what Republicans can do to tone down the rhetoric. Unfortunately, the Republican guest, Mo Brooks, was way too polite and let her get away with it, but it just goes to show how the media tries to enforce these double standards. Do you think that the press is the greatest enemy of the U.S.? Sure, but the but greatest enemy, would you, call us, would you ever call States? CNN an enemy? No. Tweeted out that um, Allison, especially NBC Allison. and CNN, just, just let me just say it one second, I won't read the whole thing. Because I remember last year after the tragedy there on the baseball diamond, we talked about how we were all going to make an effort to come together and show more unity and build bridges. And I'm just wondering if you think that kind of language accomplishes that. I have to admit it's maddening watching this two tier system of standards being enforced while we're all but powerless to do anything about it. But you can help by liking this video you can. If people can see the contradiction in the application of these standards, they might be a lot more skeptical when the media engages in these corrupt tactics. If you want to support this channel further, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send me a donation on PayPal, and I appreciate it. Thank you.